What is money? Do you think of gold, silver, coins, banknotes, maybe credit cards? What if I told you money doesn't have to be any of those things? Hundreds of years ago, explorers from Yap, a tiny island in the South Pacific, found limestone deposits on the Palau Archipelago, hundreds of miles away. The Yap Islanders mined the limestone into huge stone disks that looked like donuts, and brought them back to Yap on small bamboo boats. There is evidence that some limestone has been mined in Palau by Yapese as early as 500 AD, but more widespread mining started around 1000 to 1400 AD. Local legend holds that the Yapese discovered the rock about 500 to 600 years ago when an expedition led by a man called Anagumang landed on Palau. When first discovered, he ordered his men to cut the stone into the shape of fish, but eventually a circular shape was chosen, probably because it was easier to transport. A bamboo pole was put through the hole in the center of the stone so that laborers could more easily carry it. As the Yap community developed, there came a time when the people realized they needed something to use to pay for goods. Limestone was non-existent in Yap and therefore valuable, so the stones they were bringing home were chosen as a form of currency. Their money, known as ray, could be as little as 1.4 inches or as large as 12 feet around. The largest of the disks probably needed hundreds of men to transport. One thing to understand about this money is that it was really heavy. A big piece could weigh more than a car. While we're used to handing paper bills and change to each other to make our purchases, these stones would typically never change hands at all. For example, imagine a large ray sitting in a village. One person gives it to another person in exchange for something, but the stone doesn't move. However, everybody in the village knows the stone now belongs to someone else. The monetary system of Yap relied on an oral history of ownership. As long as a transaction was recorded in that oral history, no physical movement of the stone was required. In one instance, a large ray being transported back to Yap was dropped during a storm and sank to the sea floor. Although it was never seen again, everyone agreed that it must still be there. So it continued to be transacted as genuine currency. The value of a stone was based on not only its size and craftsmanship, but also its history. If many people, or no one at all, died when the specific stone was transported, or a famous sailor brought it in, the value of the ray stone increased by anecdotal heft. They were also used in important social transactions, rather than everyday purchases, such as marriage, inheritance, political deals, alliances, ransom of the dead in battle, or, less often, in exchange for food. The American Numismatic Association Money Museum is home to a small collection of yap stones. The largest is 38 inches in diameter and weighs 90 pounds. It was donated by Aubrey and Adeline Beebe in 1989. Although modern currency has replaced the stones as their currency, the ray stones are still exchanged in traditional ways between the Yippies. They are a national symbol and are even depicted on their local license plates. So now, when you take time to consider what money is, think of the Yippies and their limestone currency. Money really is anything that's exchanged for a good or service, not necessarily something we're used to, like gold and silver.